What's up, Shimmy? Been too long. Good, Been bro. Too long. How about yourself, dude? I think we did the podcast back so you know what's cool so it's been way I'll too speak long this, i'm into manifesting these days let's get our manifestation on in, in, when the time comes that i am bigger than what i am my following is larger than what it is you will have the privilege of saying that i was the uh, you were the first person that i ever spoke to you were the first one yes dude and it was so funny because i think i did a podcast with jorge and then like randomly we were just like yeah fuck it let's do yeah. a podcast dude um also you know i on that same vein of like you picking up traction uh, I, t I went to type in your name on instagram and it said like shimmy tutorial so like the fact that that's like a but that's not phrase me cool. that's because of the dance Really? No, 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 no. Is, Look, is, don't flatter me wait. like that. It's not because of my training techniques, because the shimmy, like the dance move. I do think. Uh, I don't think, think people. I don't think people are searching up uh, my I, technique videos like tutorials. That all like that'd be insane. Maybe, but I don't think so. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. I send my tutorials to all my clients and shit, and like I've literally got client notes to be like, did this like shimmy? I get video. so many like, DMs <laughs> like that, man. It's really wild. It's, I mean, I I'm super grateful, and it's like really, just really flattering. Like really, so many people will message me, and they'll be like, I did them just like you, or I did the shimmy press, or the shimmy squat, and it's like, fuck, man, it's cool. <laughs> Bro, fuck around and get it. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. It's really cool. It's awesome, dude. So, and and but one final thing before we get into the actual meat and potatoes here, you know what, Jimmy? You convinced me to go caffeine free on the diet sodas because yeah. I'm listening to the STD podcast. For anybody that's watching, check out the STD podcast. You always stress the importance of regulating yeah. your caffeine intake. Yeah, bro. Diet, I, so. I think that it's it so huge. And I, I'm like, I'm not anti caffeine by any means, but I think so many people band aid shit by having a lot of caffeine. And the, the sodas will fucking sneak up on you. They really will. Like those bottles, yeah. it's like little 30 milligrams here. 30 milligrams there next thing you know mm -hmm. you ba you bagged a wild one you bagged like 150 megs of caffeine doing fuck all like not even nothing just living um yeah right yeah, yeah. although i tell you i'm not a diet pepsi but guy dude, that's too spicy dude. for me yeah. yeah i think these were on sale it was like uh, it was like three for twelve. I was like, ah, no. fuck it. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you. Time, I'm gonna so. give you the hierarchy of like what I think is is top tier when it comes to diet sodas that are caffeine free. Um, I was just dieting, as you know, so this is like really top of mind. When I'm not dieting, I never drink this shit ever. <laughs> um, not a soda guy. I drink water. <laughs> I also low key like diet sweet tea. No one says that. I'm the only one that buys mm. it in the store, and I'm proud of it. I don't care. <laughs> um, diet sweet tea. I don't like love combination. Anyway, to the point. Regular diet coke caffeine free is OG to me and always number one. Like number one. Um, ginger ale. Secret hype. Ginger ale. Yes. I got another one for mm -hmm, you. For sure. Fresca. So Fresca is mm. a great one in a soda. long time. It's super good. Super. Okay. I didn't. Not no yeah, um, those would be my my three, my famous three. Those would be my ones. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna have to start adding some fresca in the mix because I feel like I yeah, because you're like, one. what is so that? Like, it's a yeah, weird drink. It. Like it's not clear, <laughs> yeah. right? But it's not what what color is it? Like yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it for sure. And uh, I got to make a special hello because I just got a text message. So hi, Alyssa. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. But dude, in the topic of fat loss and, and getting over like base level fat loss knowledge, um, I think hearing your perspectives, especially reading through some of your recent posts, it's been really cool for me. New learning experiences when, you know, I've, I've been kind of like a student of the game for a long time, but I still am able to learn a lot from a lot of the work and content that you do dude so stoked that you're here and excited to pick your brain a little bit over a couple happy, of things 
to educate. Um, Let's rip it. What you want? But do you want to just like? Yeah, dude. Um, can you give a quick little recap of like how your last fat loss phase went? Because you got pretty shredded, and I'm sure I'm excited absolutely. To hear so a I'll bit riff, and it. then you can ask questions based on my my monologue. So um, I had actually mm -hmm. done a photo Perfect. shoot last year. It was my first photo shoot ever. Got very lean, uh, leaner than I'd ever gotten before. It was great. And then classic progression. I was like, okay, I would like to beat this look. So I went through about half a year of massing, typical, and um, then had a maintenance phase and then had a two-pronged diet. And for anybody that's listening, if you're not familiar, what you should do is you should aim to shoot for anywhere from 5 to 10% of your body weight lost per dieting phase on average. So if you started at 200 pounds and you end up dieting to like 180, that's 20 pounds or 198 to 180, whatever, um, you should probably stop there. So for me, I started dieting around 202 pounds, something like that. Wasn't fat by any means, so that's also key. Have a good starting point to like be ready for a diet. So I wasn't fat by any means, but I dieted down from around that, like low 200s to like the high 180s. Wasn't hard, really just typical stuff, small calorie deficit, decent step count. And I actually made a point to not push my steps super high in this first part of the diet and um, lost around a pound a week it really was not stressful at all i still was able to have a fair bit of like fun food because my calories were not super low and i'm also the kind of person that can do this like a lot of people especially like recovering fat people and i mean this like in the best way possible they're not able to sort of have like a little piece of something and then be cool like they have to kitchen sink the shit I'm not like that. I was always like a two slices and roll kind of guy. Like I don't, not not roll as in like bread, roll as in like be out. I realized <laughs> as I said that. Um, yeah. So, you know, the first leg of my diet, I think I started out around 2,900 calories or something. And then in the end of the first diet, maybe I was at like 2,700 or 20, something like that. Right. It's not that bad. Not at all. My step count started around 9,000. At the end of the first leg of the diet, it was around 12,000. And this got me to basically from not really lean to like decently lean. Like I could see my abs was not super vascular or anything, but could definitely see my abs um, and was like knocking on the door of something that was going to be cool. So... Um, that was about three months that took me to do that. Then I had planned to only have about a four week maintenance phase, but I was traveling in Europe. And then I also got a cyst removed on my back. Um, not that it was bad or anything, it was purely cosmetic. Uh, and if, if anybody watched that RP video, I'm sure a lot of people did. Some of the comments were like, what the fuck is that thing on his back? It was just a cyst, um, got it removed <laughs> because it did keep growing. You could see it like through the back of my shirt, weird. Um, but because of that, I wasn't able to go into a significant protraction of my shoulder blades. So hard back training was out. I couldn't really lean back on it loaded. So like hard chest training was out. Basically, I was like having to like chest, chest my way through training for a couple of weeks. So you could almost do like maintenance phase and a half mm -hmm. there. So call it a six week maintenance phase. So I was well ready to get the shit going and really start dieting again. So I started the second leg of the diet around um, maybe like 186 pounds or something like that. And admittedly, the weight just started to fly off on the second part of the diet. I raised my step count from 12,000 to about 13K, and I probably started my calories around 2,700. And I really didn't have to make a ton of adjustments there until the end, sort of time and, uh, you know, being super adherent to the diet and having really, really good training sort of pushed my fat loss phase along. And that's another lesson for some of the viewers here. Time is the greatest lever that you can pull when you're dieting. Time 
and tracking and just making sure that you're sticking to whatever plan you set out for yourself and not rushing it. Um, that was huge. So like I would have days where I would lose no weight at all. And then low key, high key, I would just lose two pounds. Just like off rip and look in the mirror and be like, oh, that's a new vein. That's a new striation. <laughs> oh, didn't see that coming. Um, so that happened. And the second leg of the diet was about in duration. Uh, sheesh, I think it was another three months. And I dieted down again from about 186 to my lowest weigh-in was like right under seven, 177 pounds, which is wild. That look, that photo that you saw, dude, I was 177 in that photo. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Damn. Um, yeah. And at the end of the diet, I did raise my steps from 13K to somewhere between 14 and 15 just because I wasn't carrying a ton of diet fatigue and I was like, I was ready for it. I didn't care. And it was close to the end. So I was like, push, like, why not? And obviously raising by 1,000, 2,000 steps is like, that's not really a big push anyway. Yeah, it's not a big deal. And then I dropped my calories. I think at the end, my calories were somewhere between 2,400 and 2,450. I only use that granularity because I'm the kind of person that tracks year round anyway. But of course I do get a little bit more granular as to be expected when you start to get much leaner. But not, if not only only because you're like more food focused and just obsessed with the whole process in general. So you're becoming more of like a narc about the shit. But, um, you know, when, when you get to those levels, at least for me, like I want to do that. Like I, I want to be Mr. Anderson in, in that situation. Um, you know, like, I don't want to be chill. I'm like, I want to track every fucking thing. I want it all scoped out. I don't care. I want it all. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Please, feedback. <laughs> yeah, dude. Good, yeah. good little, good little recap with it. Um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Do you think there was anything to like a potential? Oh, the word just completely erased out of my mind. Potentiation from the maintenance phase that you took. I think to, like, that's that huge. Second, like, I think effect. having those stop gaps where you can, yeah. you know, metaphorically have a drink of water, get some air, sit down and then continue the race to the finish line is so huge. You can try to one diet your way Mm -hmm. to a new best look and it's fine, but it will just make the process so much harder. Mm -hmm. And if you do lean into those maintenance phases, even if you don't really need them, yes, it will extend the duration of the process, but the severity of the process will certainly be significantly abated. Like I didn't lose 10% body yeah. weight in my first diet. I think I probably lost about seven or 8% total body weight. I wasn't carrying a significant amount of diet fatigue at the end of the first leg. I could have kept going. I chose not to because I knew what was coming mm-hmm. and lifestyle. I knew I was gonna be in Europe. I knew my schedule was gonna be different. And I also knew that I was gonna get this shit removed at some point. So I factored all those things into consideration. But yes, maintenance phases Mm -hmm. made the diet much, much easier. And then there's something else that also needs to be said. You know, I've been doing this a long time. To get lean, like when you're doing it consistently, it does get easier over time. And it also, once you achieve a best look, and and let's say it was hard to get there, it's much easier to get back to that previous best than it was the first time. When you have to push to a new best, that will take heaven and earth just like it did before. But if you've gotten to 8% before and it was hard, the next time you get to 8%, I promise you it'll be, I don't know. I don't want to put percentages on it, but it'll be much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard you say that before, and I've definitely found that as well. Like, this overall effort in this current diet, and I'm not even, like, trying yeah. as hard as I did for that diet that uh, we yeah. did, or that we talked about last time around. So much easier, man. Um, another thing that you brought that you brought up that I really want to emphasize is the importance of, like, that maintenance phase, that drink of water. Um, basically, I think it was right around the time we did that podcast or the week before um you know like i i started the last the last like hardcore diet i did with like the intent of winning the rp summer challenge i didn't place and i was like fuck 
And then they told me like, you can come on out if you want to. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna like really dig in and like, I'm gonna show them what's up. And I think that honestly did me a bit of a disservice because I remember, I super yeah, you were depleted, fucked up. Like come today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was super depleted. I kind of like wanted to fuck around with some peaking strategies, but I don't think I was quite on point with my, with my, uh, methods. And I don't know if like I was quite lean enough to even have oh, those I, things. I, I want to um, touch on that for a second, play. actually, so if you don't mind, on the, on the topic of peaking. Yeah. So, um, yeah. the last diet that I did, mm -hmm. I ran a peaking protocol and I was lean and I'm going to be honest. I think it was a waste of my time. And I think for majority of people, and a lot mm -hmm. of professionals in the field do, do say this. I think for majority of people, peaking is a waste of your time. Just get leaner. Peaking is not going to save you. Yeah. If you're going on yeah. stage, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. If you are just peaking or if you're just dieting for a photo shoot, a bachelor party, a vacation or something like that, I wouldn't really worry about peaking. I would worry about just doing better on the daily. Like this time around, I didn't do anything. Yeah. No peak at all. The only thing that I did was I had a pre-workout before the photo shoot. That's it. Which is nothing. And then <laughs> sipped on Gatorade while I did the thing. Like just like a workout. I treated it like a workout. Um yeah, I did mm -hmm. none of that. And I said, okay. you know what? I would Good rather um, just diet, diet longer, diet harder, not worry so much about mm -hmm. having to peak, thinking it's going to do something magical because um, it's really not. And I'm the kind of person, probably like a lot of your viewers, probably like you, dude, I love the mental masturbation. I love reading the research <laughs> and listening to podcasts and watching <laughs> yeah. videos and talking to, yeah. you know, experts in the field who happen to be friends of mine and picking their brain and it's just like, I was doing that because I was going to do a peak this time around too. And it was like every day, like watching stuff about peaking and water and salt manipulation. And I was like, for what? This is such a waste of my fucking time. Like, for, let's just get leaner. This is so dumb. And it's like, yeah. and, and here's the thing. You've been working for weeks and months to achieve this look. The peak can mess it up. It could mess it up. And all of that time, and now you, you go go in front of the camera if you're doing a photo shoot and you're now you're watery or now you're bloated and you're like, you idiot, just do what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, dude, dude, you hit it the nail on the head there. Like you gotta, you, when you're kind of like invested, you gotta be careful of the, the mental masturbation stuff. Like I remember I, there's like a 42 minute I've video with, with Mike and ten times about peaking yeah. natties. And yeah. Oh, yeah. bro. I've seen that video so many fucking times. Spent like a whole day at work just reading over the uh, sure. the paper. It's like 27 pages of which they got. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it's a very, very good point to bring up, man. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about on to kind of wrap that segment up is. Uh, yeah, yeah, like to emphasize it once again, you could really fuck yourself over like talking to Jared and how some of his peaks have kind of gone awry. Like I felt, I felt for him and like, I kind of felt the same way myself, but like, I, I mean, when you put so much work in and you manipulate things the wrong way and it but goes But for south, him, it's also a different like story a because right number there. one, he's enhanced and number two, he's going to stage. Yeah. If I was going to stage, it might be a different conversation. If you were going to stage, it might right. be a different conversation, but you know, I'm doing it because I wanted to look mm -hmm. for the photo shoot and to have those photos for myself. And it's just like, there's no point. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, one thing you mentioned along the way was um, manipulating your, your step count or like we could extrapolate that to cardio versus like calorie reductions. Because I guess if you're like 2,400 calories at the end not of that, that bad. that's really not terrible. Like, no. So I'm, I'm very curious to hear your approach to know when to add more cardio. <laughs> I love the comments on these, man. People are just coming. It's all, what's up, Zach? Um, what, what's the trade-offs of like more cardio, less cardio, yeah. reducing So food? I started what's the conservative side of both at the start of a diet for myself and anybody that I would work with. And uh, then from there, um, for myself, I would prefer to actually be more active so I would lean more towards having a higher step count. I just prefer that kind of lifestyle. And I kind of really fight tooth and nail 
to keep as much food in as I possibly can and only pull when absolutely necessary. When it comes to working with a client, I just try to meet them where they're at. You know, some people have a hard time getting in a lot of steps, whether it be their lifestyle, whether they just don't like it and they prefer to just buckle down and eat less food. For me, I prefer to actually have a higher step count um, throughout the day and keep more food in. Could I say that the higher that I keep my food, the better my training is? Maybe, but like if you actually think that through, it all washes out in the end because if my step count is higher, the calorie burn is literally equated. So then like that doesn't really land. You know what I mean? Like it's like, oh, I want to say I'm doing 2,200 mm -hmm. calories a day of eating and 9,000 steps or 2,600 calories a day of eating and 14,000 steps. It's probably six of one, half a dozen, but like 10 times out of 10, I'm doing the latter for me. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just like it yeah. that way, you know, wake up, have a nice two, three, four mile walk in the morning, then just like, don't be a potato throughout your day, have your workout, and then maybe go through a stroll at night, call some friends on the phone, watch a podcast and like, dude, that's 13 K right there. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the kind mm -hmm. of life that I would prefer to have other people, you know, maybe if they're they work in a hedge fund, maybe they're a lawyer, maybe they're, you know, who, who knows what they work in cold call sales, they have to be on the phone 24 seven in front of a monitor or something. So you know, they maybe they can't have mm -hmm. all the steps, even if we, we tell them the things that you probably say, go get a stand, uh, uh, standing treadmill pace when you walk, like, but maybe they just can't. So those people, they have to have yeah. less food. Yeah. So to answer your question, in short, it works better mm -hmm. for me, my lifestyle, and just what I like to do to have my steps higher. And so I can keep my food a little bit higher. And then to your point of when do I pull what? I usually kind of pull both equally until the, the food starts to get somewhat lower and then I lean on the steps. So like in this diet, for example, I told you, I think I started around 2,900 calories and 9,000 steps. And then I went 9,000 steps to 10,000, 10,000 to 11,000. Maybe I went 2,900 to like 2,800. I think once I got to like 2,700 or 2,600 calories a day, that's when I really started to lean more on the steps. Um, and of course, mm -hmm. let the scale be your guide. Let wherever your scale is trending, you know, that's how that, that that's, well, how it will have to be. So, you know, if I'm eating a certain amount of food, getting a certain amount of steps, and I'm noticing that the scale is not losing or gaining at the rate that I want, then an adjustment has to be made. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, man. Like, I remember back in the day hearing Eric Helms, Dr. Eric Helms talking about like doing entire preps without any cardio. Um, and I don't know if it was like a, like a fatigue component that he was worried about or like, oh man, I can't even remember his rationale, but I feel like that's just very impractical for the most, the high majority of people trying to do it. I think, diet or even I think that you're right, like, but I think the thing that has to be, be considered, tough. I mean, you, you think very similar to the way that I do and you consume a lot of really good content. So I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but when people do formal cardio, it's way different because there's so much more fatiguing um so much more fatiguing and it's it just requires a lot more to go out for a little walk is whatever you know it doesn't require any willpower at least for me and for a lot of other people it doesn't require tons of willpower it doesn't doesn't accrue soreness and you know what i mean like unless your your step count gets crazy high like if you're doing like i don't know 16k plus a day maybe you'll get some lower back soreness but that yeah. stuff is probably reserved for like the end end of a diet anyway so that bullshit is fleeting anyways what I found is meat and potatoes for most right. people, if you're doing anywhere from like 10 to 12K a day in steps, that's usually really good. You might go above 12 like you did and mm -hmm. like I did at the end, but it was at the end, you know? Most of my diet was probably spent in that 10 to 12, 10 to 13K range. Yeah. It's not bad at all, really. It's pretty manageable once you kind of like make that adjustment, especially when you that when you've got that uh, nice huge so Florida weather. What so that that cannot <laughs> yeah. be understated. If I lived in Ships Creek, yeah, that would be way harder for me to do. So, um, you know, if you live somewhere like Seattle, 
or London or somewhere that's just like gray and rainy and cold. Those are the kind of people where step counts that are high may not be logical. You might have to pull food. Like, are you going to go walk 15K steps in the rain, in the cold? You, I mean, you might, but like a lot of people won't. I mean, I did when I was in London, but like, I'm a fucking psycho. I'm, I'm not normal. I'm not like normal people, you know? Um, neither are you. So, you know, I, I think the, the, the context is what's most important. That's funny, dude. Yo, I made, uh, over the winter, living in Indianapolis, it's not the worst, it's not the best, but like the hallway at the office where I work is like 53 steps, and I would walk up and down that bitch for like 30 minutes. It was so bad. I, I can relate. <laughs> so I've had times where yeah. I've been in situations where it's either very cold or it's very rainy, and I was dieting at the time, and I'd have to get steps in, and I'd be pacing in the place that I was in, and I'd have to get like thousands of steps, just pacing in the house or up or whatever it was. And it's like, look, you're you're in that you're in that season. You got to do what you got to do. It doesn't really matter if it's weird. You just need to do it. Um, if you have to do it every day, mm -hmm. then yeah, it sucks. But yeah, um, yeah, like I'm in Charleston now, and it hasn't been crazy rainy, but. Like there were a couple days when it was shit outside and I had to do a couple thousand steps just like pacing in the townhouse. Like sucked, but whatever. Dude. Uh, that's it. Yeah. I wanna I wanna talk about one more thing because I think Are you not gonna watch, watch the heat game? Your heat save this series. Oh no, I'm gonna turn it off. It's been I, I think, really I hope they can do so, it. Man. I, I don't mean, know if they're gonna win. To be honest, they're gonna like, come back, but I'll be the first one to tell you, like the nuggets are better. They're better, like objectively. But I also don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want the Heat to win. Yeah. Bro, they were playing out their ass on Friday night. Like, the one dude with the behind the back, like, <laughs> crazy. I need, we just, just need Jimmy stupid. to go off, bro. We need Himmy. Um, Himmy. Himmy needs to go off. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, last thing we'll talk about because – uh, I don't know if you listened to the last Revive Slumber with uh, yeah, Brad Schoenfeld on there, like this past weekend. Yeah, and, and Zach brought it up in the comments about the weighted vest. But have you ever tried that? We've I've never tried, never tried it. I would. And here's the use case why I would. I would try it on myself, or I would recommend someone to try it. If they want to get more out of the steps they're currently doing to economize on time and thus not have to drive their steps even higher. This is the reason why I would do it. Not because there's anything magical or anything like that. The calorie burn per minute per second is higher when you're loaded versus when you're not. So if I could, and it's obviously the same time component, you're not going to wear a, a weight of vest that's heavy enough where it's like going to slow you down. But if I could do 14K steps with a weighted vest instead of having to do 16K without, think there's a use case there i think that there's there's a point to that to just do to do not a fan but you know people only have so yeah. much time in the day so if so, like if someone had to do let's just say they had fifteen thousand steps so we're, we're on the high ends here but um no i'll go even easier let's say someone has to do 12 and let's say this person is so busy with job family hobbies whatever they can't do 12k but they can do nine or 10. It is at that point that I probably, maybe, maybe I would say consider getting a weighted vest, putting five to 10% of your body weight in that weighted vest and do 10K. You'll cut off a mile, you'll save 20 minutes of walking, and it may be the same calorie burn. Yeah. And to that, that point, if you it. are going to use a weighted vest, you're likely not going to use a weighted vest throughout the entire duration of all the steps that you're doing. But chances are, whatever step count you have, if it's decently high, you probably have allocated times throughout the day where you're going for your walks anyway. So use the weighted vest on those walks. So if you know you're going to have a 4,000 step walk, then you would say 4,000 step walk with 10 or 20 pound weighted vest and then the rest of the day, the day not. Because like wearing a weighted vest all days, that's just like... 
Like, did, did Caesar live here? I didn't think so. That's, that's what that is. That's what that is. <laughs> That'd be a little goofy. The baby's name is Tyler. Sure. I thought he looked more like a Carlos too, buddy. Dude, your movie. Did you see that Max here. didn't Every know time. what the thong song was? Like, what? Max Strasny, did you see that? It's me living in my own world. Like, why, why no, would you? See you, don't, you? My page doesn't, like, you don't revolve around my page. I don't know why I would think that you would just, like, have that on top of my. So the thing that yeah, I posted I, I yesterday, spend a, I, spent a decent uh, I used the thong song that, as the audio uh, for the deadlift video. I thought it was funny. That's just me. And Max was like, where do you find these songs? And I was like, bro, this <laughs> goes a national treasure. This is a wonder. What are you talking about? Yes, you have top tier pop culture knowledge, music knowledge. I also started the last STD do, podcast. Yeah. I learned that you dance. I didn't know that. Yo, okay, real quick before we end this, I thought for like since I started talking to you, I was like, you know what, Shimmy and my friend Ryan would get along well. You know, <laughs> both invited to the cookout, uh, and Ryan majored in dance. Now he's like one of my 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 stud clients. He like goes to like the playground in LA and shit and like Whoa, some dope cool. videos out there. Link us um, up. That's so yeah. cool. Is he's, he's a hip hop yeah, yeah. dancer, obviously. Yeah. Is that the only thing he dances? Yeah. Yeah. Um I think he was like jazz awesome. dance trained. Do you dance and or then no? just like yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have no rhythm. Fuck no, man. I, I wish. Damn. So, I so recommend bad, it. Fuck cardio, bro. Learn to dance. It's way so more fun. Bad. I heard you. I heard you're gonna start picking it up. So I don't I'm excited. I think I'm gonna be doing get that. a video or two. <laughs> like I'm, um, no, no. So this actually is more. Don't blame than, you. Uh, you didn't mean to go here, but like I'll go here for anybody watching. Maybe you'll get something out of this. Like I, I really choose, and I'm very selective of what I share on social. So like I have a lot of hobbies and a lot of things that I like, and fitness is not the only thing that I'm like decent at in life. But this is just what I choose to use the platform for. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm really, really judicious about what I choose to share. Because I could. Like, I could definitely post, like, choreos that I've done. Um, I also cook. I also cook, like, a lot. Like, well. Not, like, protein pancakes. Like, no, no, no. Like, real shit. <laughs> yeah, like, real shit. <laughs> Call me out. Um, and I, I've asked the lady yeah. actually about making like cooking content too and maybe maybe when i get the youtubes going that's just it's too short on instagram and it's yeah like i'm growing my instagram mm -hmm. now obviously but you know me a little bit i really think that i'm like made for youtube like my personality is much better i'm do better in long form yeah yeah and like the entertainment component yeah definitely comes yeah. through I, and and like it's, it's so hard instagram to just get these like little snap slap 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 shots snapshots slap shot regatta um do you know what that's from do you know what that's from <laughs> have you ever seen no. she's out of my league no. okay no I do you know when they're, that, they're playing yeah, hockey downstairs and it's like you me slap shot regatta no <laughs> <laughs> You don't remember that part? No, I can't remember that part to be yeah. honest with you. I thought you were gonna say it was like a dodgeball. So I love dodgeball. Love dodgeball. It's dodgeball. not, but dodgeball, dodgeball is always top of mind. And um, the other guys is also top of mind. Are you familiar with the other guys? Oh man! man. So, so the man. other guys is so my favorite movies. movie. It's number one. It's number one. It's my favorite yeah. comedy of all time. Yeah. Really? Number one. Damn. It's got a certain like, like, like dark but good the, aspect to it too. There's like, nothing it's, about it's it that's not amazing. Like every single line is good. Like Mark Wahlberg and uh, Will Ferrell, like they get jumped by some random people, and and the guy and Mark Wahlberg is like, "Hold on, hold on, Colombian <laughs> drug lords." And Will Ferrell's like, "Where are you getting that from?" <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and like the, the homeless people gang. Oh or like, my god, like, it's so like, oh good. So good. So good. Dude. I'm gonna have to go watch that this week. And I'm not gonna be like Dylan and say, uh, I, I hope that Dylan that is in the chat and he heard you because he deserves and, that. 
I know he was. <laughs> he was there for a second. I don't know if he still is. I know he was. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, dude. Well, I don't want to keep you all night. Right, but Absolutely. I, I hope I was able to give some value and not loss. just like blah, blah. Um, everyone that came, thank you for tuning dude, in. No, like I. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you all. Um, definitely go check out Shimmy's recent photo shoot pick. Um, are you going to be dropping more on it? Or no, 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 no. It's all going to come out. Yeah. I can't like, I can't dope them out every single day. Um, but no, there's so many and I'm so mm -hmm. proud of them. Um, when they come out, you're just like, just like that one, when you saw it, you were like, fuck, I have many more. They were just like, dude, shit. Um, yeah. And, and the reception has obviously been great. I, I think it was I think it was just one of these things where, mm. you know, for the longest time on social, like I never showed my physique. So, you know, yeah, I'm funny and I, I hope I give good value and I'm entertaining and my technique is really good. But at the end of the day, something that I've learned now, if you're making fitness content, all that shit can be great, but like, do people want to look like you? Like, do you have the goods? It's like if you're a business person person it's like yeah you could tell yeah. me about business all day long but like what's your net worth what was your last exit you know what i mean like and that, 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 mm -hmm. that's that's at the end of the day yeah. like you gotta have that so i guess i delayed putting that yeah. out for the longest and now that whatever the, the photos came out and they're amazing and i'm lean and whatever i guess now it's time to show like yeah he he's funny but like he, he really does this too Shredded. That's right, yeah. baby. Jack Sparrow. Awesome powers of fitness. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, guys, please go ahead and support Shimmy. Give him a follow. Um, is there anything else you want to plug um, real quick? Instagram, please give it a follow. Super active on there. Yeah. YouTube is the yeah. Shim Show. Um, I do repurpose my content from Instagram over there to YouTube. Um, I will be hiring a videographer, or at the very least, like learning how to film myself and then hiring somebody to edit because I really do need to get the YouTube going. So um, Shim Show on YouTube, Shim Show on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I'm so not active on TikTok. I should be, but I'm not. Um, yeah, TikTok is like, oh. yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. I need to, but I don't. But yeah. Right. Well, everybody go ahead, follow. I'm going to repurpose this to YouTube, so go ahead and subscribe. I'll link Shimmy's stuff. Link yes, it up sir. and down. Appreciate you, Shimmy. Thanks Ab for your time, dude. Absolutely. And, Thank uh, you yeah, for having me. Have a wonderful soon. night, everyone. See you around.